Welcome to Momentum Investing, property investing made easy. One of the world's top podcasts on property investing, bringing you the top experts in the field so you can learn firsthand what it takes to create passive income and take control over your financial future. Welcome to the Momentum Investing Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wood, and I want to welcome you to today's show. I am so excited to introduce you to today's guest. It is one of the things most of our of our students, of the people in our community do to get access to property deals is joint ventures. People do joint venture partnerships to raise money or to find better deals. It's one of the most common ways used to get access to the property market or get the funds to be able to get access to more properties. That is why it is such an important subject because there are so many pitfalls that you can fall down when doing joint ventures. Myself, I've had multiple setbacks doing joint ventures, partnerships that just didn't work and ended up costing me money instead of making the fantastic profits that we all hoped was gonna come out of it. That's why I asked one of the top experts in the entire United Kingdom on company cultures. One of the things he works on with companies is the founders about that joint venture partnership, how it is to come together and run a business. He works on how to make sure that that culture spreads throughout the organization, that the entire team and subcontractors, just as we have in our property deals, the builders, the surveyors, the letting agents, that they all feel a part and an ownership of the deal. That's his specialty. And Chris Cooper is one of the best in the business. He's worked with a lot of the founders on that specific joint venture partnership agreement, as well as done a lot of joint ventureship partnerships himself. So that's why I asked him to come on the show. We had a great conversation where he shared the ins and outs to what do you need to prepare up front? How do you figure out if you are good for each other? How do you make sure that you run the company together in a good way? And what do you do if things don't go according to plan? This episode, if you want to do joint ventures, this episode is going to be so very important to you. So I hope you're excited. I hope you're ready. Here we go. Please help me welcome Chris Cooper. Welcome to the Momentum Investing Podcast. I am here with Chris Cooper. Chris, I'm so excited to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Daniel. Brilliant to be with you. Lovely to see you today. Thank you. Thank, yeah, I'm super excited to have you on the show. Obviously, we've known each other for, for a long time now, and you are one of the best in the business when it comes to really working on company cultures and that kind of interpersonal relationships when it comes to business. A lot of our, our listeners are getting into uh, partnerships. They're looking at joint ventures for all kinds of different reasons. It could be financial. It could be to get lending, to get access to deals. But uh, I always tell our students, you know, when you're starting a business together, that's like getting married. And obviously, you, uh, that poses challenges at times. Uh, I would love to get your thoughts on like, what, what do you see can be, you know, what are the dangers? How, what can go well? Why do you get into a partnership? And how can you kind of make sure that, you know, it doesn't end in a divorce? <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot there's a lot of questions in there uh yeah I, I guess i should say from you know my my experience with partnerships daniel that uh, i have both uh, been involved with partnerships and and have had partnerships myself that have either been i have been successful and i have had one in particular that i think was got really quite messy yep. so I, I learned from that and then you know through my work you know when you mentioned this question to me about partnerships uh, a week or two ago, I, you know, I realized how many partnerships I actually have been have helped, uh, you know, over, just even over the last couple of years and, and some of the challenges that they've had from, uh, from partners who didn't really get clear about what their intentions were and, and realized that they actually had different views of the world at the outset through to partnerships where um, partners have completely and utterly fallen out and yeah. the relationship has collapsed and it's... Uh, you know, do we fold the business? Do we keep it going? Do we, um, through to um, partners who were married and are getting divorced? Mm. Uh, which right. is... so their relationship is breaking up and what do you now do with the company you're actually running together? Ah, oh, you know, I, it, it can get very, very messy unless you get really clear up front in terms of what you want to, you know, what uh, the intentions of the partnership are. Um, the realization of your own kind of strengths and weaknesses. Um, I get a real sense of what each of your values are because values can be a problem. 
you know, one, one partner, I had somebody, I spoke to somebody recently who'd, who'd actually lost millions because he hadn't realized that his partner was actually um, doing something fraudulent. And, okay. uh, you know, the guy's still working in his 70s, 80s, when actually he should be, you know, he should be living in a, in a huge palatial property and relaxing by his pool somewhere. Yeah. Um, there is a real risk that if you don't think through it very carefully, but also keep on reviewing that relationship as it's developed, that uh, things can go wrong. I don't want to um, create a, a, you know, a, a, a don't do it sort of situation because actually there's real benefits to doing it as well. You know, one, one person rarely achieves great success on their own. They need a team around them. They need other people they can bounce off. But I think it's important right at the outset that you get, you get, you select your partners carefully and uh, maybe you have a few dates first before you plunge into a into a marriage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, make sure make sure you get courted for a while. Yeah. Uh, but those are some great points, and I think we need to talk about both. How do you handle the relationship at the beginning to put it on the right track? But I love what you said as well about how do you nurture the relationship goes forward. So I think I want to touch on both because I've I've had. Uh, depending on how you count it, three or four uh, business breakups, and they've kind of they, uh, we've learned from each one, and they, we've kind of evolved in in each one. But uh, an interesting point you made there is about the values, making sure the values connect. And on our uh, the the latest partnership that that didn't work, we sp actually spent a lot of time talking about values, and we put a lot of time into it. Uh, but what was ironic what it turned out was there was a lost in translation kind of thing where the word integrity in English and Swedish actually kind of means the opposite things. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very interesting because obviously integrity in English means you're open, you're share, you're honest, you do what you say you're gonna do. Uh, while integrity in Swedish actually means this is my personal space. So it's like here I do not share. So it's kind of an opposite. Um, and the, the, the fault was mine because we were speaking Swedish and we were both saying the word integrity and I didn't, I didn't know the Swedish word for it, which I should because I obviously speak Swedish, but uh, it, it, uh, that was a big part of the breakup. And now that that's, becomes an obvious when you're speaking kind of different languages, but even in the same language, the words for a value can mean different things to different people. So how, how would you go about making sure, and of course, you can always say I'm I'm a stand-up guy and I do this and I do that. That doesn't mean that it's actually going to be true. Like I'm really good at handling stress, and then the stress comes, and maybe they're not as good anymore. H mm -hmm. How do you kind of go about finding those values? Well, I think I think that's a really a really good point, and I think that that cultural aspect as well was was fascinating there. And I, I remember when I when I writing my book and I wrote it with an American, uh, and uh, and I had conversations with the with the publisher which was penguin random house new york and uh, also my agent and we realized that there was we were two countries divided by a common language and yeah. so your, your point about integrity there is really interesting so I, I would recommend that what you do is that you you spend time right at the outset of a relationship if you can afford it you might want to get somebody independent to look at this mm -hmm. to to help you through through that journey. But a little exercise that you could do in that process would be to ask yourselves this, and I say it's, it's, it's helpful to have, I, I do this with clients sometimes, we, is to ask them, utilizing a single word, um, what's most important to you? And keep writing those words down. So what's, what's most important to you? So I, ask, I can ask you that if you don't mind. What's most important to you? Okay, yeah, all right. So that, what's the first thing that comes to your head in your mind? So the first, well, now I just said integrity. So obviously it's, it's up but to what, what else is important to it's you? Open, honest, uh, a shared goal, uh, ambition, yeah. and a willingness to work and kind of take your ego out of it and okay. let the great, the, the success of the partnership is more important than the exposure of an individual, so to speak. It's not about me being right. It's about us okay. accomplishing our goal. Great. So what would be number one? So number one, one, I think honesty. So, or transparency, I would say even. Uh, okay. 
would come number first. The transparency. So what I, what I would do with people, Daniel, is I would actually get them to prioritize. I'd work with them quite a bit, actually, just to, to, to get everything down on paper. Yeah. Then I would get them to prioritize in, a, in an order. I'd do that individually, actually, yeah. not, 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 in, not in front of the other person. And we would get a list, a prioritized list of one to five. Yeah. When I go into the other room, I sit down with the other person and I would gain a prioritized list of them with one to five. And then we would sit together and we would look at those, those, um, those values. And we would, we would, where there's commonality, we would start to define them as well. Right. Um, and that would have solved yeah. our integrity, integrity question. Would. Because I would have explained, this is what integrity means to me. Yeah. And they would have, because for me, that's why honesty, transparency comes at the top. I mean, that's one of the things. Like even now, I mean, obviously I'm sharing about bad business breakups. I think it's so important to share what we've failed. Yes. And, and that's where our, our formal partners obviously had a different. It's like, no, we're experts. We, we don't share some of these things. And I think that exercise would have really helped that come out. So essentially one-on-one, -on -one, find five values and then sit down and go through what do these actually mean? Absolutely. And a, and a working example with, with I've, I've done this, with people, I do this where people where relationships are kind of breaking. But I had had a lovely one um, situation probably the beginning of the year, about January, February, with a with a company, and the two the two founders were going in completely different directions. One was driving for growth and expansion and was excited and full of the energy, and the other one was a bit like I liken them to. They were both heading towards a common vision. However, uh, one of them was driving the boat at a high speed, while the other was throwing the anchor over the back. Uh, and basically for him, the situation was that he, in his own mind, family was more important than growth. And he cared about his family and his kids. And uh, he was, um, they were more important than growing the business fast. And what he had, what he saw in his mind was if we grow this business, I'm going to have no time for my family. I'm going to be working all the time. So he was all the time slowing it down and they were in a pickle. I mean, what, where we ended up in the end was in a situation was realizing they could both have growth and they could create growth whereby where his family um, wouldn't be impacted because they could bring other resources in. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that, but that shit and that paradigm shift brought them both together and they headed off, headed off very happily into the sunset. Right. Um, but that was really quite, you know, quite an interesting, an interesting example. So yeah, they could try that little exercise and hopefully that will, will help, but do take the time at this outset to, don't just meet someone at a nice event or you know, you, you and they think, oh, we get on really well. We're on our own. We're feeling lonely. Uh, yeah. Take the, invest the time up, up front, get a sense of beliefs and values and common vision. Another thing that's important is intellectual property. If one's got a lot of intellectual property and the other one hasn't, that can cause real, real trouble. And how much time are you going to put into the business? Yeah. Some people may only have be able to put a couple of days in a week because they've got their own interest. Another one might be putting five. You might have the expectation you're going to both put the same amount of effort in. Yeah. Uh, all these things have got to be teased out at the, at the beginning. Right. And how, how would you go about that? So say, for example, if uh, me and someone are going into a partnership, say I have all the experience, all the knowledge, all the information, uh, and they're going to put in the grunt work. Uh, initially, that might feel like a sh fair split, but go three years down the line and, you know, now they might have the same amount of knowledge and they're working hard and I'm kind of chilling on my side. Obviously at some point that starts to feel really, really unfair. How do you kind of work through from at the onset? And then we'll talk a little bit later down the road. Well, I, th well, I think there's a, there's an expectation at the outset uh, and it might well be that, for different reasons, somebody can put less time in than the other. However, what you realize is either they've got much more intellectual, intellectual property and experience, which should count for something, and the other person has to put more, puts more time in. But you should try and identify that right at the beginning and actually do, and kind of document it. But it may be that that also impacts, say, equity split, yeah. if, there's, if you're going to you know, uh, create uh, equity within the, within the business. And, and it could be that other person's involved with five businesses. You don't, I, I don't know. You need to obviously find out on the table, get very, very clear what is the landscape. Uh, and uh, then there's some decisions that may be needed to be made around it when it comes to, say, equity. Or somebody may be prepared to put more time in just before, you know, for, for, to, you know to have people working with Daniel, for example, in all your experience and all your wisdom, uh, at you and oh, somebody may yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody may jump at the chance of uh, of working with you. You putting less time in, 
um, but 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 basically their business is the business can be more successful because you're in it. You know, I, I bring a brand or or whatever yeah. to yeah. it. So a, a pointed question now. So say uh, a lot of the business relationships that are happening in our community are between, for example, someone in the UK who is uh, who has property deals and is there on the ground, kind of managing it, and then you have someone in in internationally who's got the money to fund the deal. And now often that goes into a partnership. You might do like a 50-50 split. You might say, uh, you might look at the different ways the, the cash flow is split because like, you know, the, the investor might get more of the cash flow until they've gotten all their money out and, and so on. But uh, what happened, what, how would you deal with this? Now I'm gonna ask you a bit of a tough question in this scenario. Because in this scenario, you know, one party has has the money, one partner has like the deal and and the work there. How would you handle, for example, if something goes wrong with the deal? You know, the person who put in the money might now feel like, well, their whole job was to take care of the deal side and that and they screwed it up. Now, is the you know, how do we get out of this? How do we handle that split? Uh, I mean, that's. I guess you know when we're doing business, some things always some, some things will go wrong, yeah. <laughs> and and there will always be obstacles, and there will always be issues. And if you're dealing with something like you know you are with property, things can go wrong that are beyond your control. Yeah. And and I think you're going to have to have a very a good relationship up front to to be able to sort of you know deal with that. But what you have to realise is that um, like things can go wrong. And they, and not blame you. You know you don't blame. You look for ways to resolve things, um, but also then you know there is learning that's involved as well. So the might you need to have a relationship which is open and honest enough to be able to talk about your failings because we all have them. Yeah. Uh, and I think you can you can document some of this in an, in, a, in an agreement if things go wrong, or you, you should also talk up front if things go wrong but you have to have this initial commitment that you're both going to do everything that you can to, to be successful. And, and I suppose you know, I was talking to um, actually an, an Israeli leader the other day, and they were talking about why is it that in, in Israel, apparently startups are got much higher percentage of success than in other parts of the world. And they have something called chutzpah they talk about, which is basically the ability to oversee problems and just keep on going. Right. Uh, and therefore, I think what you have to do is you have to have that tenacity to keep on going. Um, but yeah, the geography can be a challenge. You've got to be talking a lot, yeah. um, build that relationship up front, talk a lot uh, and um, and have that commitment. If things do go wrong, you'll work together to try and uh, resolve these issues. Um, but yeah, it just become a challenge if you feel one partner is slacking and, yeah. and, and not doing that. But seek first to understand before being understood as well. Uh, I love because, that. Yeah, because it's as you say, and I, I asked you that question because it's, it's very easy, especially for someone who's a new investor to expect like, well, this is an expert, everything's going to go perfectly. And as you say, things can go wrong that are not in anyone's control. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, you have to be able to call someone to account if they're, if they are slacking off, if they're not doing what they agreed to. Yeah. And it's, and it's interesting. I mean, my financial advisor calls, called me during the COVID situation. And actually, I wished he hadn't because he told me how much my, my pension had gone down. <laughs> yeah, oh, that was such a horrible call for both of you. You know, and, and actually what my response to it uh, was to, I had a very serious meeting with him this time. You know, normally he has a lovely meeting with me. I must be quite an easy client for him. Um, but I and, I, and it wasn't a blaming one. I understand what the situation and scenario is, but there's one or two, there's, there's one area of my portfolio in particular, which actually is the commercial property aspect. Right. whereby um, they have some interest in it because they own quite a lot of the property. Uh, um, so I uh, had to have, you know, this time I said, look, you know, I, um, and they, they, they talked to me about how um, my account handling had changed and I could see extra costs coming in. So I said, look, you know, we need to have a very serious conversation right now. I need to understand where we are and particularly around that commercial property because you have a vested interest in it. We need a very serious conversation. So I took it seriously. What I didn't do was I didn't blame him and I didn't get angry with him because actually, you know, the markets have shifted. You know, it's the, the playing field has completely shifted. They wouldn't have foreseen that. 
No, nobody no was. exactly. So, it's one of those things. Yeah. COVID was a was completely out of the blue. I mean, there's there are people that you know obviously foresaw the crash in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and even though that was a difficult thing to do, it was possible. But COVID is totally out of right field. You yeah. it just it just happened. Yeah. Can I, can I share something else that I think is really helpful to do at the outset? Please. Yeah, can, can, I, I think I do a lot with, um, and, and, and I think you do, you utilize it as well. You utilize talent dynamics, don't you? Yes. And, um, and I think I've done over well, 900 of them now with clients. So I, I utilize that. And there's wealth dynamics, which is the entrepreneurial version. I, you, which is what we have all of our mentorship students go through, yeah. wealth dynamics. It's, I mean, I come from the Beautiful. recruitment agency, a, a recruitment industry. I've done hundreds of personality, well, maybe not hundreds, but at least a hundred of personality yeah. tests and wealth dynamics is by far my favorite. Yeah. So I would say with people, you know, do that with, uh, with you and, and make sure you have an understanding of uh, who, where you're in your flow, where your partner's in, your fl in their flow. Um, because what often happens, you meet someone, you really like them and you get on with them and, and it may be because they've got the same flow as, as you. Yeah. And, uh, and that can be great because you energize each other. However, if you're two very people oriented people, you're going to miss out on the detail. If you're two yeah. detail oriented people, you might not get deals through because you've not got the, you know, the, the, the emotional intelligence when it comes to people or, you know, you may want ideas and neither of you might not have ideas. So I would recommend that you look for a complementary fit with that. However, with a complementary fit, you're also going to see things very differently. So you've got to be open to that as well. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate and that's teaching. That's really important, especially when you're trying to delegate tasks to each other. You know, if both of you are kind of the people out running and then you're both trying to delegate the admin tasks to each other, then uh, no one's going to be happy or it's not going to get done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So we spend that time. So I love this. I mean, it's, this is so important. So say we spend that time up front, you know, we've sat down, we did that exercise with the five values, like writing down our top five. We discuss them and we really see, okay, good. This is a good connection. Uh, we work out all the details. We say like, this is your role. This is my role. These are our responsibilities. This is how we're going to follow it up. We put a contract in place to make sure that like this, you know, we have it all in writing and we're all in agreement and, and all this. So all that is kind of, is kind of done. Now that does not mean that everything is smooth sailing from then on out though. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do, and, and you mentioned that in, in, right at the beginning there, is you've worked with partners where they're going through a divorce or their business, you know, they're not even talking to each other anymore. So you might have an agreement that says, you know, if we're not going to work together. I mean, that's, for example, one of our partnerships. We had an agreement up front because I'd been in bad breakups before where we said, look, if we do break up, this is exactly what we do. But obviously that didn't save the business. That just made our exit of the business very simple and clean. Yeah. So how, how would you go about, you know, so you don't get to that point so that you instead have that open and sharing and support the whole way through? Yeah, I would be, I would be regularly checking within, in with each other in terms of how the relationship is really going. And, and I would advise actually, again, if you can afford that to have somebody independent to do that with you. So I remember, I remember talking with, um, so I'm going to name drop here, but obviously, you know, I've, I've done a lot of interviews over the last 10 years, but I remember chatting, chatting with Jack Canfield, mm. you know, uh, Jack. Well, of so, course, um, the consumer yeah. soul, one of the chief in, uh, in the movie, The Secret, uh, Transformational Leadership Council. Yeah. 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 So a fascinating, fascinating guy. And, uh, and Jack said at the end of each week, what he does with his staff is he, he always asks them this question. Um, on, on the scale of one to 10, how would you define the quality of our relationship this week? Wow. Okay. That is very good. And, and what and does it do with that then? Yeah. What happens next? And, and therefore, if, if, you know, for example, they might say, well, you know, Jack or Daniel or Chris, yeah. you know, the, um, the quality of, like, I, I would say this week it was a seven. Okay. Okay. So, so what, what's, you know, what, what get what's um what would have it taken to have been a 10 right so you're still asking the questions in a positive sense too yeah. you're not saying what was wrong you're saying what else what yeah. would have it taken to get to a 10 yeah well actually actually on that deal this week you know what you did is you did this but you didn't tell me about it and i've got to be honest i feel a bit frustrated about it so it may be that you know by regularly just sort of checking in on the on the quality of the relationship i would be 
Um, I would be talking to each other at least every, every, you know, if you can, a quick call each week. If you're, if you've got a distance apart from yourself, try and keep that, you know, quite sort of short and prompt, but you've got a series of, you know, monthly meetings, which may be more operational quarterly meetings that are more strategic, but get that formal structure. So here, here is a big learning I had when I, I, I work for big corporate brands, but companies like Mars and I became a director of a big pub group. And, and then I went into small business and what, and then I set up my own business on my own with a, just a small team around me. And what I realized was actually that all of those structures that I got so frustrated with in, uh, in, in corporate, you know, board meetings, <laughs> appraisals, having a line manager, finger pointing if things didn't go right. What I realized when I set up my own business was actually after a couple of years, when I had done well the first two years, then I had a real struggle in my third year when a lot of work um, suddenly didn't happen for reasons beyond my control. But what I realized was all those situations had actually been my friend. Yeah. And they were the reason why I performed highly because they held me to account. You've got to put those situations into a small business as well. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, this, and then this lovely idea to do serendipitous things and, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, see what the universe brings you. There's a bit of that. That's great. But also you have to have some structure as well as some regular consistent reviews and, um, and you have to do things properly. It's not an excuse because your money's on the line this time. Right. You know, you've, you're not just, just your job. Yeah, and so one one thing that uh, comes to mind there, because I think that's super powerful. So I'm, I'm I wrote that down right away. We're I'm going to implement that. I do a follow up with every you know we're spread all over the world. I mean I have in I have a you know a social media team in Saudi Arabia. I have a video editor in India. Lukash, our closest business partner, one of the hosts of the show, is in Poland. We're in Sweden. You know we're we're all over the world. And uh, so I'm, I follow up with everyone every week, but I'm definitely going to add that question. But one thing that I would be um, that how I'm curious how how to overcome is how do you make sure everyone feels confident enough and being able to be that transparent? I'm thinking especially with with, you know, a boss or with a business partner where it's like, well, look, I'm, I'm actually frustrated with you. That, that can be frightening for someone to say, especially if they're afraid of conflict. How, how do you make yeah. them comfortable enough to say, you know what, you did this, but you said you were going to do this and I didn't like it. Um, yeah, how, how, can you, how do you help them get to that point? I, 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 get, I guess there's a, there's a bigger piece, which is what is the culture of the organization? So if you create a culture where there is, there is finger pointing and blame, yeah. Or, or you, or you get at, you know, get angry with people, uh, or people are going to start to tell you what they think you want to hear. Yeah. But but if you have a if you create a culture whereby actually you know in this business we're just completely and utterly honest. I'll be honest with you, um, you know, as, as Daniel, where where things are going, you know, well and where they aren't, and how I feel about things. And I, I, you know, in this organisation, you know, we we recruit people who um, have got the same mind. Uh, then you will find that people will start to op open up. Right. Um, but, you know, d do, um, do all of Donald Trump's advisors want, feel comfortable to t tell him, <laughs> you know, and, and what it does, it creates a ripple of effects, unfortunately. So I would say create from you this ripple, which is about integrity, because that's what you're about, is about honesty uh, yeah. with people. Uh, and, and also be, be prepared. It's actually okay as well. What we'll do is we'll, we'll lean into things in this business. Yeah. We'll lean into problems. We won't have elephants on the table, so we lean into things. That's that's okay too, because that can bring, you know, brings brings harmony as well. Uh, we'll get we'll have conflict sometimes because, but it will be conflict on the problem, not on the person. Yeah. Um, so I think it comes down. There's a bigger piece, which is about what is the culture of the organisation and what are the what is the what is the languaging? What is the languaging upon recruitment? Um, you, you've also got another challenge, though, of course. You've got you've got the uh, intercultural. You yeah. see people in Saudi Arabia, you've got people in India, you've got, we're actually, uh, you've, you've actually almost got to overcome the culture with your culture. Yeah, exactly. Um, because the people may in India tell you exactly, uh, you know, just something to please you yeah. when the truth might be something different. So, you know, it's, it's hard a task, but you've got to try and create that framework of behaviors that you want to have. You might have to write some of these down. Uh, and start talking about them regularly and uh, and being prepared to be a bit vulnerable yourself.
Yeah, I think that's where the fear is. And I think especially for, for a lot of our, our community here with these, especially in like a small partnership when it's, you know, it's the deal kind of owner in the UK and it's the international money holder. It's, you know, that if that become if that relationship breaks down, it's not like, you know, you don't have a whole organization. It's okay if you're 50 people in a company and two don't like each other, that's fine. They just do different projects. But if it's like, if it's you and me, and it's only us, and there's something that I don't really like, but I'm afraid that you're going to get angry if I bring it up, and then that will break the relationship and our deals will go down. You know, that's frightening. But of course, I think it's worse to sit on it because then obviously it festers and gets worse. Yeah. It, 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 but also, sometimes the, I, I found that quite, quite often, honesty has had a, a different effect. So yeah. you might be worried about bringing something up. And I'll give you an example where someone was honest with me, and it was when it was my book writing partner. So I was writing my book, How to Get Things Done, whether you feel like it or not. Sorry, that sounded like a shameless plug. But I, I, we, I, like our, we like the plug. <laughs> but, but, that's it was, but what I, the reason I mention it is because um, the, I wrote it with a clinical psychologist in Minnesota. And we were, we've, never, we've never still actually been able to met face to face. But we, <laughs> we, got, we worked together over about five years when it come to, came to, to publishing and everything. And we got to a point with it where we had very different styles of writing. I'm much more about saying it as it is and being, but my, my co-author um, is very eloquent in his writing and, right. and, he, and, and the, the art of writing is important to him. And, and I could sense that we got to a point where in, in, in our partnership, where it just got a little bit uncomfortable. And, uh, and he said to me, he said, Chris, he said, could I say something to you? And he said, you might choose to go away and write this with someone else. And if you want to, it's okay. And he said, you know, I'm working with you because you're a great communicator and you understand entrepreneurship. But he said, I don't think your number one interest is, is the actual writing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I love to write. And we've got two very different writing styles. Um, so he said, if you want to go and write your own book, that's absolutely fine. I said, I said to him, what, Stephen, are you saying that you want, to do the, you want to do the lion's share of writing on this book? And he said, yeah. I said, oh, thank goodness for that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, it's like whoa, you know, brilliant. You know, I, I mean, I can just, I can just come up with case studies and uh, yeah, talk I'll to people and do all the work, and then you yeah, do it. Yeah, and uh, and he was like, oh, you know, thank goodness for that. And actually, it brought us closer together. Yeah, that honesty. But you, you, you've been building up to it for a few weeks, you know. Um, no, and I love that. I love that, and I, I agree. That's that's what the whole like integrity, honesty. Uh, means to means to me as well you have to be able to but it, it is a nerve-wracking kind of thing I can imagine him sitting there and going like you know he, he doesn't want to say Chris I don't I'm a better writer than you uh, let me do it yeah but at the same time he's saying like can I do it can, yeah. can I get you to stop <laughs> yeah. and, and I've always now I, I lean into things where I need to I lent into a relationship a month ago with someone I had a I've got kind of a, 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 an informal sort of partnership with and I had to share with them that I felt I was giving a lot more to that partnership than they had been in return and um, and actually when that was suddenly it opened up to her in her mind it, it was it was like oh my gosh gosh I've just realized you know you've you've been doing this for me this for me this for me this for me and uh, and there was something whereby she gave me a, a, a small discount on a product and I thought like I'm sorry, I've spent hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of pounds plus my own time on this. Yeah. And, and when it when it when it, um, it dawned on her, you know, she was kind of full of remorse, but also gratitude that I'd shared it with her. And I said, you know, I said, you, you, this, your business is going to get bigger and bigger. And you've got to got to think about two people in that relationship. And we've been close, really close since um, oh, really close. Well, I, mean, I think that happens in every partnership. I mean, it's it's so easy. We kind of see what we do, obviously. I mean, I, I know what I'm doing every minute of the day and I'm doing so much, mm. but then for, if I'm, I take Lukas as an example, who's sitting there in Poland working, working so hard on the business, but a lot of what he does is like behind the scenes, he's working on the systems and, you know, I'll see like, oh yes, now this have, you know, it's just, he's working under the surface of the, of the ocean. Yeah. And then all of a sudden a, an iceberg kind of pops up and I see that I'm like, dude, I've been working hard for two weeks and you created this little thing without realizing how much is actually going on under the surface and yeah. how many hours and days and weeks it takes to create that tiny little iceberg that pops out. 
Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm sure he feels the same way because all I do is record a video once in a while and post it on Facebook. I mean, how much time can that take, right? Uh, and and you, so, so I think that communication back and forth is so important. Yes, yes. But always, always seek first to understand. Exactly. Always. Yeah. I love this. So thank you so much. Just to summarize kind of what we said. So at the outset, really sit down and get the values. And I love that exercise. Sit down and write down like five values each, order them in importance, and then sit down and really describe what they mean. That's yeah. where we missed in, in our partnership, where we both said integrity is the most important thing. <laughs> and we met the exact opposite. And it was horrible because I wanted to tell people, I screwed this up. I did this, but I actually did this well. We got to this point. And the other one is go like, no, we, we don't share these things. And, and it created a lot of, a lot of tension. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, that, that question from Jack Canfield, like, what would it, you know, what would you rate this relationship over the past, past week? And what can we do to get it to a level 10? I'm definitely going to use that. And just the open and honesty, get everything in place up front and then have that continuous work and then continuous honesty going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, and get, some, and get some of it in writing as well in, in terms of an agreement. That's, uh, that, that is, is important from, uh, yeah. from experience for when it does bite you. Um, well, even if it's not a business breaking up as well, it's much, you know, if there is tension, you good. can point back and say, like, look, this is actually what we agreed at the onset. And both might go, oh, wait a sec. Yeah, it is. And, and then you can have a conversation if that needs to be amended or if, or if you know what what's going on so i think that's and, and as you move forward realize you, you know, your consciousness and awareness of uh, of the world actually and the situation will change yeah. so that so that agreement may you know may need to be evaluated at certain points as as well and and also what can change if the money gets significant as which is one of my experiences you know people people's can shift from being good friends to wanting <laughs> even more of the cake and uh, yeah. that can be yeah, and, and just like you said with the two friends who were, who were growing their business and one realized, wait a second, I want more time with my kids and the others, I want to run forward as quickly as I can. And then, and again, it didn't mean that they broke off. It didn't mean that they, that they compromised. It meant that they found a way to run as fast as the, one, as the runner wanted to run, but in a way that allowed the, the family man to get his time with his family. So yeah. there's usually a, a best of both worlds kind of thing or a... I think it's Stephen Covey who says like the glorious third alternative. Um, that's really good. So if anyone wants to learn more from you, I'm, I'm sadly, we got to wrap up. I'm having so much fun, but uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people want to learn more from you. So how can they connect with you, get access to your teachings? Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. You can, you can uh, connect with me. Um, we have a website, which will soon be going to, into development, which is uh, chriscooper.co.uk. Um, you can contact me at chris at chriscooper.co.uk you know please um uh, join me on linkedin and uh, that's probably a good place to get me these days i'm on facebook and the likes as well um and uh you can listen to my recordings by uh, you know by, by um on we for 10 years i've had my radio show so there's a uh, for about 400 hours of content there which people can access for free on voice america voiceamerica.com if you google search for chris cooper is in there but yeah i'd love to love to hear from you and if you want any any help and uh, ideas and thoughts i'm i'm, I'm here that's awesome thank you so My much purpose is to help that's, people realize the potential so that's what i that's awesome so chris cooper.com that's c-h co.uk co.uk sorry yeah. yes too american here mm -hmm. uh yeah so chris cooper cooper with two o's and a c as well dot co.uk uh what what's the name of your book now again um, yeah, it's um, a bit cheeky. It's the power to get things done, whether you feel like it or not. I love it. I love it. I've read well over probably a hundred books on, on time management. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had, I had, it's about 10 years ago. I went on a rage. I was reading things from Brian Tracy. I love David Allen's books. Uh, he's also got, you know, getting things done is, is actually a book that he's written. So I love that, that genre. So I'm definitely think people pick that book up and get get your insights into it uh, is it on amazon how do we get yeah, it you can get it from amazon yeah amazon. And, and yep. it's, and it's, it's a little different to some of the others it's not um it's not about t necessarily time management it's about um, creating situations i realized from all my interviews that that people who were very good at getting things done i remember ivan meisner saying this that he uh, he, he realized that the difference in success between two people with the ability one maybe having the ability to get things done 
uh, whether they felt like it or not. And um, uh, and they did a big piece of research exercise and realized that this, this is about, I realized that these kinds of experts, they create situations that mean they have to act, yeah. whether they feel like it or not. So they have to have to walk, not wobble. I love it. Yeah, because I found, I mean, I read all those books and I learned to very, very good, like systemize my day so that I can get things done. So really, once you do that, you see time is not the issue. You don't have a lack of time, but it, sometimes you have that lack of willpower or lack of energy to actually sit down and get it done because you don't feel like it. So I think that's a brilliant insight because 24 hours is ample time to get a lot done. The question is how much time do we spend watching Netflix or just sitting staring at a wall or going to the coffee machine 10 times extra uh, or sitting, I mean, I think I, I read a study in the US, the average person during work hours sits two hours on social media. Mm. That's in an eight hour work day and then, and then they ask, why, why, why don't I have more time? Well, 25% of your work day is going to and this is average, I don't remember what state, but it was employees in one state in the US, 25% of their workday is spent on social media. Very easy to take to save yourself an extra three days a month uh, through um, being, being more efficient. Three, day, you know, three days, that's 30 days a year. And if you've, got a, if you've got 100 employees and they could all save three days. Well, you're yeah. adding a month to the to the year every year. Well, actually more because you only work 22. That's a month and a yeah. half of work days. And you get a new employee, you, you know, if you, for every 10 person. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah that, that, that works. Yeah, I, I think that. that's really good. So, all right. So um, the power of getting things done, whether you uh, want, feel like it or, feel like not, it or not. Yeah. Yeah. On, on Amazon chriscooper.com or .co. See, I'm, I'm getting stuck on it. Cooper, <laughs> chriscooper.co.uk to learn more or connect with you on social media. Thank you so much, Chris. I really, really appreciate this. You taking the time. And of course, for everyone, listen to the Business Elevation Show. There are, I mean, you've had some amazing guests on there. And I'm honored to say I will be a guest. Yeah, I'm going to be an cool. incredible company. So I'm really honored about that. You know, it's going to be really, really cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for being such a great interviewer today. Give me thank the you opportunity. for joining. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned. We got some exciting news coming up. So I'll speak to you in a moment. I sure will. Thank you. Wow, wasn't that amazing? Chris has so many lessons. So I hope you take this and put it into place. So the next time you're going into a joint venture partnership, what do you need to do? Well, make sure your values align, right? Make sure you have the right contracts in place. Make sure you've actually gotten to know each other, dated for a little while, and then make sure that throughout the partnership, you're following up and making sure that that sticks and that you feel that you have a good partnership together so that you don't have to do that tough exit. Now, the next question is, how do I find these partners, right? How do I find this great joint venture partner? Well, in our next episode, you're gonna learn exactly how. We have such an exciting guest, so make sure you subscribe to the Momentum Investing Podcast because on the next episode, we got no one other than Jordan Harbinger. Yes, Jordan Harbinger is coming on the show. If you haven't heard of Jordan, Jordan is one of the most famous people in personal development in the entire United States. He runs the most, uh, the, one of the top three most listened to podcasts on personal development in the entire United States. He has the Jordan Harbinger Show. His specialty is networking. How do you find the right people to do deals with you? In other words, how do we now find these potential joint venture partnerships? And how do we create that mutual benefit? I had a great interview with Jordan where he shares the true ins and outs to how you can build your portfolio, how you can find these partners that will allow you to grow quicker, faster, safer, easier, and how to do it even if you're not comfortable in networking. So how do you do it without it being difficult, without it taking time? He'll show you how to do it completely safe, easy, simple, and only six minutes a day, and it will help you grow your business and build a massive portfolio. So make sure you subscribe to the Momentum Investing Podcast because you do not want to miss next week's episode. And now if you want to jumpstart your own property investing journey and start doing deals, I want to give you our gift to you. Go to MomentumGift.com and you'll get access to the three simple steps to property investing and the three most common mistakes new investors make and how to avoid them. It's a two-hour 
video course where we'll show you how you can start building your portfolio. It's completely free, so go to MomentumGift.com, get access to that. It is an amazing course. And if you're not yet a member of our Facebook community, search for International Property Investors on Facebook. You should find the group, join the community, join that conversation. Looking forward to seeing you there. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Jordan Harbinger is going to be an amazing episode. I'm super, super excited. So make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you there.